All right, guys, so here we are. I want to welcome you all to the Cleveland Moto, Moto Stories of the Unky Phil Scissor Action, a uh, thing that we got going on. It's amazing. We're involving a gunfire. Uh, we're doing all kinds of fun stuff here, but we are taking our little dirt bikes, our SSR 125s that we built hastily under competition circumstances, and we're breaking them in. Uh, we've already dumped oil once. Mine had just the most beautiful glitter coming out of it, so we know it's breaking in just perfect. And uh, we're gonna go on, we're gonna give you some more, uh, some more live shots from what we're doing here, and we're trying not to uh, kill ourselves. Okay, what we have here is we have the Cleveland Moto hastily assembled creative quarter. The creative quarter has four turns. Uh, this first turn right here is no big deal, but you can take it wide. If you take it wide, you have to miss the derelict uh, camping uh, pop-up camper, otherwise it'll rip your leg off. You basically just gotta almost hit the garage. So if you almost hit the garage but miss the F800 tractor, you're in the sweet spot. <laughs> then you go around the, the full trailer there, go around the thistles and uh, around the uh, Hawthorne, get through that. We cleared that out. There's no more sticky uppies or sticky outies. Get down to turn two is lady's choice. You can do whatever you want back there. Then you run the back, you know, the back short. But then turn three is where it gets truly hairy. Turn three, you got three options. Taking the inside line is safe. Anybody can do it. Uh, the middle is literally between two trees that are about four feet apart and there's a gully right in the middle of them too. So it just grabs your front wheel and makes you think about things. But if you take it wide and you go the other side of those two trees, it's a sweet spot. It lines you up perfectly for entering the Tunnel of Love. The Tunnel of Love is everything to the right of the pines. We've cleaned most of that out and uh, got all the stabby parts out of the way. But on the entrance, there's about a 90 pound cinder block to your immediate left, a concrete block to your immediate left and then a pile of concrete blocks to your right. And you kind of have about a, a, maybe an 18 inch gap to shoot there. If you get that right, it's heaven. And then you can just haul ass the rest of the way all the way down here to turn four. Now you're gonna see turn four and get excited about it. But what you realize is about three quarters of the way out of turn four, or out of turn three into four, we've got just the worst possible terrain. We laid boards down and everything else, but they pulled a 70 Chevy van out of there and took most of the earth with it. So it's got a very big trench and uh, it's a, hey, how are you? If you're not at float speed, you're probably not gonna make it. Turn four here is just a cakewalk and you get to choose your line. If you wanna get in with the spectators, that's the wide line. You can party with them as you pass through or you can take the inside line, which is very nice here. Sets up a good opportunity to pass though, coming out of turn four, if you wanna take the inside line and skip all the derritus here on the infield. I think I'm very happy with the Cleveland Moto Quarter. There's dignity when you crash. You, you crash, people have a war story that goes along with it. And your war story should never start with, so I was racing this scooter. <laughs> and I ended up in the ER in Denver, Denver General. And uh, what we were doing is we were racing, legit racing, and I mean, this was a sanctioned event. We were racing motor scooters, but then when the racing was done for the day, they had abandoned an AMA, an AMA Supercross track adjacent to the road racing track we were on in Denver. And so 
we decided to take our race bikes, which have like, you know, this much suspension, and we'd take them out and we'd go out on the AMA Supercross track. Well, we'd take it easy. And I was holding an iced tea in my hand and, you know, I had a cocktail and I'm just riding around all gentle like. But then guys started, you know, doing a little more effervescent, a little more energetic run. And I was like, oh yeah, that's cool. So I got around the trash can, threw my iced tea away, and I said, let's go. And so uh, then I got, I picked it up a little bit. And I was riding this, you know, highly kitted 70cc tuner bike, it's about 70 miles an hour. And I caught the first part of a double like it was my job. <laughs> but the problem was I couldn't make it to the second part of the double. <laughs> so I did the Wiley Coyote in the air in between. I just put a little sign that said, yikes. And I fell out of the sky about 12 feet <laughs> and my leg landed and then the bike landed on top of my leg mm. and it exploded my left leg and uh, there's a big titanium rod in there now and a bunch of screws and stuff. But when they showed up to take me to Denver General, it's a whole other story and it's good to have friends that are doctors. My buddy Pablo showed up with a handful of pills and he's like, take these now. And uh, so that was great. And uh, yeah, we reduced the fracture right there. We got all the, the sticky outy bits back in again. And we put a basic rudimentary splint on it because the uh, the ambulance had to come from very far away with the, the the C team driving it Sunday, of course, and they had to go through the motocross track to get to where I was. And by the time they got there, I was feeling great, telling jokes like I always do. And they got me to the hospital, and I'm laying in this hospital bed, and the guy next to me is, "Oh, my knee's so bad. I need pain meds. I need pain meds." And you know, he's a drug addict, and I'm sitting there telling jokes to the nurses and having a great time. And uh, so they said, so this is, a, we got a motorcycle crash in bed three. And so the doctor comes in, he goes, motorcycle crash. Oh my God, are you okay? You know, what kind of bike were you riding? And I said, well, we were off road, we were doing a little motocross. Well, what kind of bike you riding? I was, well, I was riding a Prilly RS50. Oh, what kind of bike's that? I was like, oh, it's a scooter. <laughs> yeah, there you go. They gave me a bunch of pain meds, which my friends all stole from me before I got back to my buddy's house. But I did get to spend all Sunday on the couch with the air conditioning going and got valet treatment from my buddy who's a mortician. So Billy the Bone Man, cheers to Billy. He, uh, he walked me all the way through the airport in the, uh, in the wheelchair and got me through security. And uh, they just did a, a, a splint, you know, to get me on the airplane. And that was a trip. You don't ever want to go on an airplane with a broken leg real bad. So but I got back and, you know, a couple of weeks later, nail, nails and rods and pins and screws. And it's a story, but don't ever start your story with. So there's one time I was racing a scooter. <laughs> Shit got weird. Hey, how's it going? John, how's your bike? Uh, how's it handling after the builder? Is it everything you expected it to be? It's handling better than me. Let me just tell you that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a pretty good workout. <laughs> You're not kidding. My forearms are like throbbing. Oh, it's like oh, oh okay God. like two or three laps i'm like holy that cow like it's like I, right you know there. a lot of beer breaks is what's necessary <laughs> <laughs> do you think this is gonna finally get us all in shape no no it's not <laughs> it's gonna get us all hurt and broken is what's gonna happen here <laughs> All right, Dan, so how'd your bike handle after you built it? You digging it? Yeah, it's working good. How? I, you know, I would have won if not for putting the handlebars on backward. You would have been second fucking place. <laughs> so uh, how, how you, it's a, is it a workout doing this stuff or what? You enjoying it? Yeah, Jesus, my old man ass was done after two laps. <laughs> Had to stop for a beer. <laughs> I don't think it's All right, so d is your bike working that was never officially assembled? You're making me feel bad. <laughs> it works perfectly. It's perfectly fine. No problems at all? Nope. I had to tighten the handlebars. That so, was it. And that was fueled by which which uh, fuel? The build? <laughs> what? Was that uh, tequila or whiskey? What was uh, uh, I started out with uh, tequila. I switched to whiskey, Basil Hayden's thanks to Chris and then I switched back to tequila and then I switched back to Basil Hayden's and then I switched back to tequila at the end. So yeah wrapping up here at the end of the day just letting you know um, if you ever thought about getting into dirt bikes I recommend waiting till you're over 50 uh, because over 50 this just gets the gets the pump going and the pump in the arms, the pump in the neck, it's fantastic. And don't buy a real dirt bike. Get one of these things, get, get a toy. Because what's great is you just go out and you don't realize how insane 30 miles an hour is. And you get to do all the stuff, you know? And by the end of the day, your leg's out and you're doing all kinds of cool shit. And then John, of course, had to make a ramp because John makes ramps. So now we have a ramp. And not a ramp. It's not a jump, it's, but it's beautiful. So I hope you guys like the highlight reel because Steve was able to follow us around a little bit, <laughs> camera on. Best fun I've had in a super duper long time. So in case you were wondering, yeah, getting a little play bike is about the funnest thing you can do 
once you've got to a certain point in your life. If you didn't do it in the first 50 years, make sure you do it in the second 50 years. Yeah. So that's Cleveland Moto and Moto Stories with Unky Phil. Uh, ride fast, take chances. And let's uh, let's bah, 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 bah. All right, world famous grumpy sewer guy. Where are we at? We're in New Russia Township. And what is uh, this? What is your spot here? What are we? Where are we riding? And what are we doing? Is this uh, your prepper compound, or what do you call it? I can't tell. It's a. It should be an undisclosed location, <laughs> deep with under the earth. But now everybody's going to know about it. So what good is a prepper compound when everybody can come to my prepper compound? But this is where Mini Ohio might be, right? It will be here if uh, if. Uh, if it doesn't work out in mid, mid Ohio, this will be mid Ohio, early Ohio, late Ohio, whatever. Mini Ohio. Ohio. I mean, it'd be great. <laughs> I mean, people are welcome. I'm, I bought this land to share with everybody, and it's not, I mean, I don't covet anything I own, so. Awesome. You can even drive, ride my tractor. <laughs>